Hi everyone, my name is Raziel Kane and I'm back with another RK's voice acting. I've always loved badass women. When I was a kid, I always preferred a woman who could kick ass, like Shira, Tila, or Chitara. As a teen, when I was more into comic books, Rogue and Storm were some of my favorite X-Men. As a young adult, my favorite female characters included Tex, Jean Grey, and Sonya Blade. And now, at the prime age of 43, strong women are still some of my favorite characters, including Black Widow and Alita One. But there's one character Transformers fans can point out and say, this one is special. Arcee. And today, let me tell you about the strong woman behind the voice, Susan Bloop. Born Susan Maria Bloopka on July 12, 1948 in St. Paul, Minnesota, she adopted the name Susan Bloop, or Sue Bloop. Little is known about her childhood, but when asked how she got involved in voice acting during a panel at TFCon, she recalled that as a kid she used to stutter a lot and also had dyslexia, which was not a known condition at the time. Because of that, she did speech therapy until she was 16 and was in a learning disability class until the school realized she did not belong there. Being in those type of classes of course attracted bullies and she would hide behind characters and voices that she created. Surprisingly, she wouldn't stammer when doing those characters. She graduated from Stevens College in Columbia, Missouri in 1968, the college at a well-renowned drama department. Therefore, Susan got noticed, got to do some work, until she got cast in a commercial as Poppy Fresh, the Pillsbury Dough Girl. That started her in voiceover, and she was great at it. Her early work includes the voice of Rita on The Incredible Hulk, Sunny Sunflower, Fuchsia and Canterbury Bell on Rose Petal Place Real Friends, as well as Stormer and Lindsay Pierce on Jam. Eventually it led to her casting in Transformers the movie as Arcee, the most baddest female in Transformers history. Did we have to let him detonate three quarters of the ship? But it wasn't her first Transformers role. She was both Karen Fishhook, and the production assistant. I'm missing several scenes from the picture. Someone broke in here and stole them. From Hoist goes to Hollywood. In season three, she was better. Alpha Tryon's second in command in the episode Forever is a long time coming. The hated mark of our servitude to the Quints. For a million years, it has been our symbol of shame. A3 says we must make it a symbol of freedom. And she was Marisa Fairborn, my favorite human character on the show. Yes, so are you, Dirk. What was that for? Want a list? Now let's review some of her voice roles in other shows, before we move on to her voice director resume, which is also quite amazing. She was Jessica Ray, Belle Fry, and Futura from Film Nation's Ghostbusters, as well as Buttons and Paradise from My Little Pony. On Brave Star, she was Judge J.B. McBride, as well as Viper. She voiced Galadria and Eskador on Visionaries Night of the Magical Light, and she voiced the unforgettable Transmutate in Beast Wars. She mostly directed in the 90s and 2000s, but she did reprise the role of R.C. in Transformers Animated, and also did the voice of Flare Up. But Susan, in the 80s, also had the dream to direct. After being told politely to stay where she's at, she eventually got offered a low-paying voice director's job for a show labeled Stupid by every director that turned it down, and it was possibly only for five episodes. She jumped on it, and that of course turned out to be the unforgettable show The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And instead of five episodes, it ran for 193. This started her on an amazing directing journey. She is listed on IMDb as a voice or dialogue director for 117 titles from movies, series, and video games, and she has 43 titles under her belt as a casting director. Her most known work for us Transformers fans is of course her amazing contribution to Beast Wars. This show had the best voice acting of its era, on top of a great story. She also did the follow-up series Beast Machine, and her other Transformers related work includes Transformers Animated and Transformers Prime. Two great shows. Her non-Transformers work is also quite impressive. She's been involved 
with 20 titles of the Land Before Time franchise, the 2003 TMNT reboot, the Men in Black cartoon, Jackie Chan Adventures, Benton Omniverse, the Magic School Bus, and the Tick. And trust me, the list is much longer. Her contribution to voice acting doesn't even end here. She and her late wife, actress Cynthia Sanjay, owned and ran Bloopka Productions Incorporated, a television and film voiceover school in Los Angeles, and together they co-authored the book Word of Mouth, A Guide to Voiceover Excellence. Here's your chance to read from the best. Susan had a brief on-screen career, participating in shows such as Three's Company and Knight Rider, but also had a starring roles as Mrs. Amanda Shepard in Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood. Through all the interviews and panels I watched during research, I felt the dedication to the art this extraordinary woman possessed. She's simply one of the most talented and impressive artists I've had the pleasure to cover. I for one am glad she voiced one of the most memorable characters from my favorite show, and I was extremely happy when she was inducted in the Transformers Hall of Fame in 2017. During that induction, she was presented with a unique plaque with a gorgeous figure of RC. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of Sue Blue's career. If you did, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Also leave a comment, I really like reading you guys. Keep coming back, I have more on the way. And remember, nothing in life gives you the right to be an asshole. Take care.